Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Today's video is going to be about my labor and delivery experience with Mason Everett Miller. <music> So I went into my appointment on the 16th of January. I was just going in, I was 38 weeks and three days. I had just a regular routine checkup. I was worried about less fetal movement and my kick counts were lower than what they were supposed to be at 38 weeks. So I did tell my doctor, she was a little concerned just cause I was so far. <laughs> just because I was so far into pregnancy. She noticed that my fluid was low. So she told me she was gonna induce me that night at five o'clock. So I, I, I had my bags packed, but I did not think I was gonna deliver at 38 weeks and three days. I called family and let them know that I was delivering and told them that it's the real deal, guys. So. We get to the hospital, check in, and it's me and my mom, and I'm feeling great. Like, I feel like I'm not in labor at all. We stripped my membranes also at my appointment, so I was already dilated to one centimeter, which is not a lot. So they really wanted to get it moving. So that night they put the Cervidil in at, I think, like seven. So after you have a server deal, you have to sit down for two hours and just lay in bed and do nothing, which was not fun. And I was having some contractions, but they were not bad at all. So after my two hours and get you this, I was cut off from food, like cut off from food. So like everyone knows you don't have food, but I was shopping. I don't know why I was just so scared to, to eat before birth. Cause I was scared to like you know pushing so much anyways you get it so i ended up getting the cervidil at around like seven so i was no longer allowed to move and do anything for two hours so after those two hours i was dancing i was walking and i still was getting um i still was getting some contractions and I really couldn't even tell I was getting them. I do have a high pain tolerance, so that might be why, but personally, I didn't think my contractions were pretty bad in the beginning. Um, so after the Cervidil, they wait till the next morning and she was going to put the Pitocin in at five in the morning. And at that point, I had not slept the entire night because I was so uncomfortable and did not want to be up and moving at that point. Um, I was starting to actually feel my contractions a little bit more. At five, when she, before she put the Pitocin in, she checked to see if I was dilated and how far I was dilated. So I, at that point I was at a one and a half, like closer to a two. So things were not moving as fast as they wanted it to. So after she put the Pitocin in, my doctor came in and said, um, you know, it's gonna take about an hour and a half each centimeter. So it's gonna be a while before we have the baby. So I was okay with that, you know, I was, not in so much pain, but I was just trying to think of other things. And um, and it was Friday, January 17th. So I knew I was having the baby that day, but I was thinking like nine o'clock. So after she puts the Pitocin in, I have to, you know, relax and just sit there. So my contractions were getting worse because that is what really speeds up your labor. And I was about to get the epidural. I think I was three and a half centimeters dilated at that point and I got the epidural. The epidural did not work. It, the first time she put it in my back and so I'm, I'm kind of tall, so I'm 5'10 and so I don't know like what happened because my right leg was not numb at all, but my left leg, like my left side of my body was just completely numb. Like I could not lift it up. Um, and when I expressed to her that 
I could still feel my contractions on the right side. She was like, no, really? And I, I literally lifted my entire leg up in the air and she was like, okay, you can still feel your contractions. So like, you're not, like, you're not lying to me. So after that, she told me that, that you could either, you know, stick with the one side. Well, first she told me that let's wait and let's wait an hour and see, you know, it might take longer because sometimes it goes in the vein or what, I don't know what she said, but it might go only on one side and then later on it'll shift to the other side. So I waited it out and nothing changed. I could still feel my contractions on the right side. So my contractions still weren't as bad. I didn't think it was gonna be, I thought contractions were gonna be a little bit worse than that, to be honest. Everyone's birth experience is completely different. Can people, you know, tolerate pain? Oh my goodness, you smell. <laughs> Um, people tolerate pain so much different, differently than everybody does. So, um, I guess I'll just, okay. So everyone experiences contractions differently. Um, I mean, birth in general differently. Everyone's story is different. And no, it's not bad that you got the epidural. Like it still makes you the exact same woman. You're pushing your baby out and you're still mom. It does not make you any less of a mom that you got the epidural. Like for probably 0.5 seconds before I had Mason, I was like, oh, I'm gonna do natural. Like I wanna see about it. And then I was like, yeah, no, there's no way. And if you did, did natural, like props to you, but it's just, it wasn't my thing. After I got that epidural the first time, like I said, it did, it only worked on the right side um, or the left side. So my right side was completely, could lift my entire leg up. Um, and she told me that the chances are if we wait longer, you can get it and we're gonna have to take it out and we'll put it back in and it could either not work at all or it could completely work. So I took my chance and I said, you know, if it doesn't work, like it doesn't work. And I was terrified, but I ended up trying again and it worked on my left side, but her putting it in the second time was really bad um my contractions were worse i think at that point i was dilated to four and a half centimeters or two, i think it was still three and a half so she was trying to put it in my back but it was not going in you're doing getting that epidural all while you are having contractions and so you have to be so still you cannot move and when you're getting contractions you are in pain at that point, I was in pain. I was so uncomfortable. Um, nobody was in the room with me besides the um, nurse and the lady putting the epidural in. So I didn't have family in there at that point. And I had to sit up as straight as possible, which was super hard. Cause when I got my contractions, I wanted to lean over. And it kind of felt like when you were running and you were out of breath and you needed water, like you were cramping up. And, but I had to sit as tall as I could, which was really hard for me. So after she probably took about four Why minutes don't just to get that, lying. she put the needle in my back, which was not fun. So thankfully that epidural worked. So I got two epidurals in my back. So the first one didn't work and the second one did. So I could not feel anything. So at that point I was four centimeters dilated and it was about 12. So after that, my doctor, you know, waits. So at I think one, it was like 1.15, she came back in and checked to see how far dilated I was and I was 10 centimeters dilated and 100% effaced. So I was ready to push. Not mentally, but physically I was ready to push. Um, like you, you think about this moment like that. Those were my last 
couple minutes, you know, that I was going to be just not a mom, you know? Um, so a lot of things rushed through my head. I was like, okay, I'm about to have a baby. So everyone starts to come in and my doctor doesn't come in until like kind of 30 minutes into me pushing. I struggled the most with figuring out how to push. I was pushing from my face and I could not breathe. I was like struggling so hard. Um, but then you kind of you get in the groove of it and figure out how you need to push. Because I had never had a baby. I mean, I had no idea. I mean, they tell you it's like the movies, but it's not. It is totally not the same. And I'm not trying to tell you this to scare you, but you have to experience and figure it out. Everyone's story is different. But pushing probably was the, like, the hardest part for me. I like to see like what's happening. Meaning like if I don't see progress, I feel like, and I can't feel it. And I feel like I'm, you know, not doing anything. And it, it kind of makes me mad. Um, and that's what happened. I couldn't see anything and I had that epidural so I couldn't feel what was happening. Just people were like, oh, I can see his head. I couldn't feel how far he was out. So everyone just kept saying, push, push, like one, two, three, hold, blah, blah, blah. I was getting mad. I think that's when I started crying because I just, didn't know how long I was going to be pushing for and not being able to see where he was and how far he was out. Um, but 56 minutes later, or, or I don't know how long I pushed. I can't remember. I should probably look that up, right? So after pushing, he was born at 2.36 p.m., seven pounds, 12 ounces, 21 inches long. And that part was the scariest just because he didn't cry. So they put him on my chest for about five seconds. And as a mom, you read all these books before you have your baby and they say to have them on your chest for at least an hour. Like that mom bond, it's, you know, and I didn't get that. So I was worried, you know, I was like, oh my gosh, we're not gonna, you know, bond. Or I thought that was kind of the only way, but obviously it's not, it's different now. But when I did notice there was more doctors coming in and that point freaked me out. So my first words were, why is he not crying? I was just scared at that point. And so they take him away. He still isn't crying. So I'm freaking out at that point because a ton of nurses come in and I was just crying to my mom, like, why is he not crying? His father went over there and, you know, was with him for a little bit and he still was not crying, but they were saying that, you know, everything's okay, like he's breathing. But I think they were just kind of telling me that because as a mom who just had their baby, you are so emotional and, you know, they don't want to scare you if they don't have to scare you. So I think they were just trying to not freak me out. Um, but of course I was. I was completely freaked out just because I had no idea what was wrong. He was supposed to be crying. So they did take him down to the nursery. And um, he was there for about an hour and a half just to check and see about breathing. Like they did the tube in his nose and his dad did go with them. Um, I was not able to go because my doctor was still trying to deliver my placenta. But he was down in the nursery for an hour and a half and I FaceTimed his father who was with him the entire time I was like, what's happening, how is he, like has he cried yet, and get you this, I gave him a bath and they took, they put tubes in his notes and he still didn't cry. But they said he was perfectly fine, he was just a calm baby. So he didn't cry for the first 16 hours. He was so calm. To me, I've never experienced that and it was amazing. He's super healthy and I am happy that I have him. And it's just amazing. It was, you know, my family was there and they were crying, but after he came back from the nursery, I got to hold him. I am so glad that I have a beautiful, healthy baby boy and he's perfect. So thanks for watching.